Hey everybody, welcome back to Blockchain Central. Today we're going to summarize and recap the month of October and see what happened in the blockchain space in the last 30 days. Last month brought more bad news for the Libra Association, some promising developments in the field of blockchain adoption, as well as some good news for the Kick Messenger and a great financial result revealed by Coinbase. Let's break it down. October saw significant adoption news coming from all over the world. In a speech delivered last month, President Xi of the People's Republic of China has called upon Chinese developers and entrepreneurs to embrace distributed ledger technology and capitalize on the opportunities that blockchain brings to the economy. President Xi named financing businesses, mass transit, and poverty alleviation as potential use cases for the technology. In a follow-up, the Cyberspace Administration of China has published a list of 506 blockchain projects that have already been registered with the organization. In January, the Chinese government made it a legal obligation to formally register all blockchain projects being developed in the country. That makes it clear that China is not against DLT per se, as long as the projects are submitted for the government supervision. Out of the pool of 500 projects, most are focused on financial services including trade finance, asset management, cross-border payments, and supply chain financing. What's even more important, among the submitting bodies are big established entities such as the Commercial Bank of China and Ping An Bank. In addition to those big financial institutions, Chinese industry giants such as Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent are also mentioned. Not to be outdone by the private sector, the Chinese government itself has been involved with multiple projects included in the list. It seems like China is finally betting on blockchain, but doing so in its typically structured and tightly controlled fashion. We're going to be watching further developments closely, so be sure to follow us for more updates. Government-oriented blockchain projects are also being developed in the Western world. The London-based professional service giant EY, formerly known as Ernst & Young, announced the launch of EY Ops Chain Public Finance Manager (PFM for short), a blockchain-enabled solution designed to help governments improve their management for public funds. According to Mark McDonald, EY's global public finance management leader, contemporary public fund management requires transparency, accountability, and robust evidence for decision making. Transparency is especially key when handling government-funded projects, as it alleviates any risk of corruption and nepotism. Of course, handling public money is not easy, as it requires precise allocations of budgets, selection of contractors, and especially prudent accounting practices. The latter might be further complicated if a wider selection of public sector departments as well as private contractors are involved. The ops chain architecture promises to track public funds in real time and create a single source of performance information. Ops chain, which was launched in 2017, is a customized version of the Ethereum blockchain and has both a private and a public edition that uses zero-knowledge proofs and works on the public Ethereum network. Even further west, a Chicago-based financial services company, Morningstar Inc., is designing a rating system for blockchain-based financial instruments backed by real-world assets with a particular focus on structured finance debt instruments. What are debt instruments? In short, these are ways an enterprise can raise capital. As a documented binding obligation, they provide funds to an entity in return for a promise to repay the lender, subject to the agreed upon terms and conditions. They can be used by individuals, public sector, or private sector entities in situations where they choose to obtain capital from multiple lenders through an organized marketplace. The rating services provided by Morningstar could pave a way for this huge $117 trillion industry to move from a current system, which is based on trustees and custodians, to the blockchain. Importantly, the rating system will be integrated into the blockchain, which could render it fully trustless and manageable through smart contracts. At first, the infrastructure will be placed directly onto the Ethereum blockchain but could include other blockchains in the future. The company's COO, Michael Brower, said that blockchain startups are not at the point where they can eliminate the custodian, but he's convinced that they would like to chip away at some of the custodian's responsibilities. And clearly, Morningstar Inc. wants to participate in this process. We'll be monitoring this space closely and we'll report on any technical and operational partnerships that Morningstar launches in order to fully realize this ambitious plan. In other news, we have to mention more companies backing out of Facebook's Libra Foundation. Probably the most notable partner to recently withdraw from the project was PayPal. In the official statement, PayPal communicated that they intend to focus on their goal of bringing financial services to the underprivileged markets. 
The company also emphasized their long-standing partnership with Facebook and their intention to keep the dialogue open between the companies. Later in the month, PayPal was joined by MasterCard, Visa, and eBay in its decision to withdraw from Facebook stablecoin. It is speculated that political pressures and intense scrutiny were the main factors contributing to the decision to back out of the project. We have previously reported that Kick Interactive and their Ken cryptocurrency were facing severe financial issues due to the SEC's aggressive probe into their 2017 ICO. After months of struggles, there is some positive news coming from the Kick camp. Media Lab, a California-based holding company focused on developing media enterprises, has reached an agreement with Kick to acquire Kick Messenger. The Media Lab team intends to maintain and further develop the app and promises to make it faster more reliable, and eradicate spam bots. And to finish our report on a positive note, Coinbase, arguably the most popular crypto exchange, revealed that they have earned over $2 billion in transaction fees since the platform launched in 2012. The company CEO, Brian Armstrong, commented that most of those profits are reinvested in developing new products, which should make Coinbase even more attractive to individual customers. Okay, so that's it for this episode of October Recap. Let us know if you feel that we missed anything. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, link in the description below. You can also follow me on Instagram at the Blue Mantic to catch up with my other projects. See you in the next one.